A very special guest, Rocco Palmo, is Rocco. here. Yes. Great, Great to, to see here. you again, uh, Kev. Good to see Welcome you. Welcome to my town yeah. for once. <laughs> Uh, famous blog, Whispers in the Loja, has been going on for, uh, great for so many years now, uh, Rocco. And uh, as you said, we're in your hometown. Talk about uh, this great year of so much activity here in Philadelphia. Well, first off, welcome to Philly, and welcome all the viewers. Welcome to Philly, and this is you're going to be sick of us by the end of September, <laughs> because obviously uh, it's 49 days till the world meeting begins, and uh, and then of course you know climaxing with the Holy Father. So it's I remember it's so funny. This is like deja vu. Last time I was on Catholic with you guys, we were in Watertown at the studio. It was eight years ago. We were talking was about it that Pope, long ago? We were talking uh, about PopeInAmerica.com. Well, here we go again. D <laughs> different Pope, different town. That's very here, true. You know, here we go again. Now, you grew up in this in this fine city in South Philadelphia, I yes. believe. Mm -hmm. Where the and, good food uh, is. Many, many years ago, <laughs> you, you started this blog, which so many of us are familiar with, that we, we keep abreast of, and your Twitter feed, and you, you help us to know what's going on in the church. But it's become, it's become enormous. And if people don't know about it, it's whispersinthelogia.com and Rocco is the man behind it, and what is it that motivates you to, to keep us informed of so much that's going on in the very heart of the church? Well, it's, it's kind of funny, Father, because especially being here, having grown up in this city, in this local church, you know, there's ends like Boston, like so many of the great cities in the country, that there, the sense of the church is a neighborhood, and that just that, um, you know, even in tough times, everybody's together, everybody sticks together, you know, I mean, so the, the, when Jesus talks about your neighbor in your gospel, it's not like your neighbor's 20 feet away across a property line, you're sharing a wall with somebody. And, but what keeps the neighborhood together in part is um, just that sense of kind of getting through life together, but with what's going on. And so there's always been a great sense of that in Philly, and there's always been a great sense of that in our church, and so, and that's really the church I love, and, and do love. And so to kind of bring that to people, or at least to bring it in that kind of way, mm -hmm. where it's just a kind of conversation, but also not just information for its own sake, but to build up communion, to build up our life as a people. And obviously, you know, our, our cities have both had, you know, tough times over the years. And so to have happy news, to have a happy day, and to begin it with the strong right arm of the church, with the knights, uh, you know, it's a great, it's a great start. You know, it's, the Holy Father's going to be wearing a lot more simpler vestments than the knights did today, but <laughs> it's, uh, but it, it's a great way to kick it off. And it uh, is, as um, Archbishop Chaput said in the, in the Mass, it's the first chapter, um, talking a lot about family. We get the world meeting of families, and uh, here we're focusing on family and focused uh, on the Mass uh, vote of, of the family as well. And talk about that, uh, Rocco, if you could, too, about the family of the church and, and how important it is to sort of focus on that, especially during these times. Well, it's, and again, especially been true for us here as, as a people in this diocese through very tough times. But now, it with the Holy Father coming, with the world meeting of families coming to us. It's, you know, it's going to be a happy day. And that's, but we see all of us in our lives, at the major moments of our lives, whether it's joy or sorrow, where do we end up? In the church, surrounded by the family of the church. And so this is just kind of a, you know, I was thinking, you know, or I was telling some folks, the uh, visit of or the weekend of the papal visit is actually my sister's first anniversary of my sister's wedding. So it was a great dress rehearsal because we had cast of thousands of screaming people and it all surrounding a figure in white. A very different <laughs> figure in white this time, That's granted. Right. But even because of obviously this also prepares us for the Synod in October in Rome, um, at which Archbishop Schapi will be one of six Americans. But really what the Synod's going to talk about is a lot of what we experience as a family going through preparing for my sister's wedding, we had some family deaths, but also some challenges <clears throat> for, you know, because part of the question of this is, how does the church respond to people in pastoral situations? Well, my sister wanted a Sunday wedding. It took us seven churches before we got a <laughs> place for her Sunday wedding. I'm like, and I thought to myself, and this is before the papal visit was announced, I said, do I really have to ask the Holy Father to come over here and do this and just do it in the hall? But, um, you know, so much of what we see um, in terms of the challenges the church faces, our challenges in just dealing with people in situations, or even wakes and weddings, if you will, you know, just the challenges of ministry. And so um, to see the fruit that comes when the church, you know, does its best, mm -hmm. reach, does that extra mile to, as the Holy Father says, to accompany people, to really be the church walking with our people and uh, through the challenges in their lives. It's going, it's going to be an amazing moment, that whole September, October period. So I'm trying to take it easy. I'm actually okay. back from the shore just for this, and then I'll probably sleep for the next three weeks just to prepare. <laughs> you know, your Archbishop, our host here yes. in 
the great Archdiocese of Philadelphia, very beautifully highlighted the role of Peter in the Gospel today, uh, that he played a special role in Jesus coming across the troubled waters. And, uh, and so that man in white, uh, as, when he comes to our country and to this fair city uh, in just a short period of time, is going to have a, a tremendous impact that, that we can't quite understand. But you've been quoted recently uh, as saying that if you have the chance to meet him, that they're going to have to kind of wipe you up off the ground. You're going you're to <laughs> melt. What, what is it about Pope Francis that is so engaging? Well, you have to remember, first off, uh, the, you know, again, I'm being selfish, but this is my first Italian pope, at least as Italian as I am. You know, his family <laughs> came over on the boat to Argentina. Uh, so there's that sense of, um, you know, uh, John Paul II, having covered John Paul II at the end and Benedict, learning them, it was something to learn, grasping them, you know, but, but with this one, I've just, I've got this, um, in just it's an instinctive grasp. It's mm -hmm. almost like he's part of the family. He says a lot of the same things my own grandmother used to say, and I know exactly where they came from. And even like when you go see, he's like almost like the old Italian ladies who we still have in our churches here who go up, who touch the statue, kiss their hand, touch it to the statue, and make the sign of the cross. You know, that, that, that sense of devotionally, that just incarnate faith. But also, too, again, the sense of that sense of family. You have to remember for the first time, I think since Paul VI or even before, we have a pope who has an extended family, mm -hmm. you know, because Cardinal Ratzinger or Pope Benedict was one of three, but had no nieces or nephews, and John Paul II was an only child right after he lost his brother at a young age. So he knows what it's like to have all these rambunctious cousins and aunts and uncles and siblings, and and how you know it can, the challenges that come with that, but how graceful it is, and he's kind of extended that. You know, I people have said to me over the years, you know, you make us feel like a family, and so just that sense of because I have 20, 31 first cousins, you know, and that's how the church has been an extended family to me through the years. So I think that's part of it, but part of it too is just how, um, you know, the sense that he has powerfully that um, that we um, as a people you know, can always do better, but we have to learn from each other. And there's that sense of, there's that sense of example, which has just opened the doors to so many people. Now, granted, not everyone has the complete concept of him. It's not just kissing babies and everything, but this is not something this guy can do alone. He's encouraging us, you know, because one day, please God, may it not be for a long time, there won't be a Pope Francis, there'll be another Pope. The work of the church continues, but this all goes back to the gospel and to living up to and imitating the gospel. When you're talking about my archbishop this morning, I just have to say this, because having known him for almost 20 years, sure. my, my first friend in the church outside of this town, and someone to whom I owe so much, back especially to because the back to Denver. In Denver yeah. um, he, he, when he talked about Peter in the rocking boat this morning, I could, it was almost as if in a way he was talking about himself and these years here uh -huh. and the challenges every day waking up to somebody blaming him for something he didn't do, or um, you know, just kind of taking out their frustration with the church on him, and again, having had nothing to do with it. And wanting to love people, wanting to kind of you know, bring all of us together to a better place. And so um, it was just, it was, it was very moving to hear that because you know, it was his way of saying, we know God is always with us because it's been for him, I know it's, it's been a temporal struggle in terms mm -hmm. of trying to piece everything back together again. But it's also been a spiritual struggle. Yeah. And it's, you know, if he didn't pray the way he does, if he didn't have the sense of, you know, love of the Lord and of his presence, I'm convinced that anyone else who would have been sent to this diocese would be dead hmm. because of the um, challenges mm -hmm. of, of, of dealing. Of and he's been, he's the only one who could have done it. So, and it's still... We still, well, hopefully after the visit, we'll have the work of the renewal of this diocese, the renewal of the church here. And it's, in the Archbishop's mind, I know it's, uh, the hope is that this will be like World Youth Day in Denver in 1993 and with everything it did for the Archdiocese mm -hmm. there to really make this place a center of Catholic life uh, in the U.S. and beyond again, and a, light, a center of vitality and creativity and mm -hmm. newness, all these things. The same things the Holy Father is calling the church to. Okay. And so we have the resources here. We have your friendship. We have, you know, the Catholic TV family. And uh, 
So let's start praying to the Holy Spirit that beautiful things are going to happen. And these events do have a powerful effect. I mean, you look at our friends of Salt and Light and how they were born born out of World Youth Youth Day Day in Toronto, you know. But even things like, you know, when you look at Denver, things like Focus or things like, you know, uh, even the lay formation programs they have. And the beauty of Archbishop Shopsy being here is that this, and it's been something we've seen throughout the Northeast, but but particularly acutely here, the sense of... um, the clericalism of the place. You know, people were, were told, well, Father will do everything, you know, just show up on Sunday, go home, watch the Eagles lose, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> you know, the church is something people go to, not something people want. Yeah. And everybody has a part in it. And it's not just putting your envelope in the plate. Mm-hmm. And and so really making us a church again, a people again, where everyone's baptism is, th- that you know, that's the call. The call to holiness is, is universal. The call to building up the church with each of our charisms is universal. Because if anything, growing up in this town, I'll tell you one of my dirty little secrets. Uh-oh. You know, the whole pressure was, you know, well, you love God, you, you love the church. Well, people were very kind saying that. But like, well, then that means you have to be a priest. I said, well, if everybody's playing by the rules, we'd be extinct after one generation by that standard. <laughs> and it was Archbishop Shophew then in Denver who taught me the meaning of my baptism and allowed me to see it through the fruits of World Youth Day in the church or that he so marvelously cultivated. So, you know, in the church, no good deed goes unpunished. You do a great job, they send you into something even tougher. <laughs> and um, so now the work in a way, please God, begins again, um, you know, with September as the catalyst. And you'll be, you know, we'll be here for all of it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I, I forgot to bring you guys water ice and tasty cakes today, but the water ice would have melted along the way. So, uh, but I, we'll the- have to do the culinary tour Philly at some point, bring a camera along, I guess. Sure. Sure. And f- the future, the blog keeps on going. How long have you been doing it now? And it's it's over almost 11 years. Wow. And, wow. Uh, you know, part of me is like, with this visit, you know, it's like, okay, I never expected the Pope would come back to Philly. I mean, I've, the life of the church is fascinating. I mean, it's just like I'm coming up on 25 years of that. I'm like, well, it's a great way of having a 25th anniversary party. Everybody's come. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's almost like there, there are almost no other mountains to climb after this one. This is kind of like the ultimate. You know, uh, somebody asked me, well, what's it going to be like? Well, besides mopping me up if I get to make the whole thing. <laughs> but I said, it's really kind of the culminating because, you know, the, my love of the church comes from the city. You know, nobody else, no place else could kind of give me the um, formation I had in the church as a kid. Yeah. You know, and because uh, people always ask, what planet are you from? Uh, and so I tell them Philadelphia, then they understand. But, um, you know, that this, having two conclaves, two papal visits to the U.S., you know, three mm-hmm. remarkably different but equally graced pontificates for the church. And, you know, the Pope coming here and just kind of my whole life kind of coming together in this town almost feels like the full circle moment, you know. So it's, uh, I haven't been able to start thinking about it emotionally yet, though. I'm just still thinking in terms of logistics and crowd numbers and mm-hmm. security and, um, you know, we'll, you know, hopefully the Secret Service won't, you know, misfire one of the uh, snipers that's going to have, that we're going to have on the roofs around here, you know, <laughs> if I get too excited. The so Secret Service has your name, I hope, because you're very uh, important to us. Uh, yeah, well, I hope they have we my name for the right for reasons. The right reason. yeah, <laughs> not the wrong they're not ones, looking they're, for Well, they do. They're doing oh. the background checks on all of us now for the media center. So many of us look to you, Rocco Palmo, for, for breaking news. So i got to ask you before you go, uh, any, uh, any breaking news today? Any breaking news today? No, um, Actually, there's been too much breaking news in this town the last couple of years. That's why I have the gray hair I do. No news is so, good no, news. Well, no, well, no, no. There is good news. No, we, the, well, thankfully, the Knights are here to help us begin this moment of grace. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, um, and to take the spirit, the spirit of Philadelphia, not just the boat that we have out on the river called that, uh, into the wider church. And, well, Catholic TV's here. That's the great news. Yeah, you know, so, but again, you, you know, we're all going to be having, a, this is just the beginning. This is like the pre-party. Exactly. Uh, we're going to be having a lot more fun over the next six weeks. So uh, I look forward to seeing all of you guys again. But, um, yeah. but seriously, thank you for being here. Thank, and thank you. you for your thank service you. to hey, us. Sir, you you keep us informed. And you build up our faith in, in a very unique way. And I think I got through this whole conversation without a word on deflated footballs. <laughs> <laughs> You're very good. <laughs> well, thanks you guys so are much. The best. Uh, Thank you. Thanks so much, Rocco. Whispersinalogia.com. Check it out if you haven't already. And-